Chapter 1. Life is not always a bed of roses, but you must learn to cope even in the most impossible situations. We all wish we could be happy all the days of our lives, but that's impossible. There is no recipe for happiness. Shocking? This is the truth. There's no surefire way to achieve that satisfaction you seek in life. Your emotions, if nothing else, will get in the way, and if you keep trying to figure them out, you will never be able to get a grip on life. The good thing is, even if you cannot totally understand or control how you feel, you can manage life situations and go through them successfully. There are just some problems that will never change. Accept them and build a better life. Most people see themselves as failures who can't enjoy their lives until their situation changes. However, most times, the path to a better life is accepting what life brings, and your frustrated efforts help you identify what you can't change. Stop wasting your time trying to solve issues the same way you've been doing before. Instead, when the change you seek seems impossible, turn it into a goal that can be achieved. For example, accept that your daughter ran away and stop blaming yourself for not being able to stop it from happening. Instead, embrace all the good things that help you cope with the situation. In this summary, you will learn several ways to manage life's problems instead of trying to change them. In addition, it teaches the importance of endurance in navigating through hurdles of life. There is no should or should not when it comes to having feelings. They are part of who we are and their origins are beyond our control. When we can believe that, we may find it easier to make constructive choices about what to do with those feelings. Fred Rogers, Chapter 2 Self-improvement is good, but you need to go easy on yourself. Everyone wants to be a better version of themselves. While this is an excellent thing, it can also end in self-sabotage. When you constantly want to be better, there's a high chance that you do not appreciate yourself enough. Your weaknesses are not entirely controllable, and there are always limits to how much you can change. Knowing these limits will help you manage your life more effectively. Hold yourself accountable for the effort you put into making things better by judging yourself realistically and learning from your mistakes and not the results you get. You might want to control situations such as praise from your spouse, success, happiness, and love, but you ought to set more realistic goals with reasonable standards instead. Developing standards for behaving well and welcoming feedback from others will help you become a better person. The problems you face can't always be solved by finding their source, which means you continue to obsess about them. This can result in self-doubt and can, in turn, distract you from taking your next step. These tips will be of help. Give up trying to find the cause of a problem and gather motivation by reviewing why you want a change. Remind yourself of your values so you can easily ignore the negativity and focus on who you want to be. Instead of figuring out a problem, manage it by seeking help via rehabilitation a coach, or a robust support system. Prepare a plan of action for your life and focus on it. The goal is not to get rid of negative feelings, even though they might be painful to hold back. The goal is to ensure that they don't control how you behave. Don't just try to improve yourself. Know yourself and understand your limits so you don't end up going in circles and not achieving anything. Striving to improve yourself brings diminishing returns and prevents you from accepting yourself and living with what you've got. Michael Bennett, M.D., and Sarah Bennett. Chapter 3. Don't let your self-esteem define you. Take pride in your efforts. Contrary to popular opinion, self-esteem does not determine just how sound your mental health is. Also, it is not a necessary tool for achieving your goals. The only source of self-esteem is doing what you believe is worthwhile, even when it makes you feel negative. You begin to feel like a loser when you start to compare your achievements with others. Set realistic standards instead and be proud of yourself when you achieve them. Stop comparing yourself with others. Instead, 
Have a standard that focuses on your abilities. It's not enough to love yourself unconditionally or do what you enjoy. You also have to accept that you might not always feel good about yourself or achieve all the goals you dream up. Do your best to be independent, decent, and accountable to your values. This will help you respect yourself more for making an effort to be better. You're doing so well. Try to take credit for that. Sometimes we are faced with situations, ranging from bullying to living with a disability, that will require us to prove ourselves to others. Remember what is essential and make values. Consequences should be at the core of your thoughts. Be proud of your ability to make the best out of terrible situations. You might not always be able to avoid them, but you can always keep your cool. You cannot control everything or everyone. Learn to educate yourself on your current situation, fight the shame, rebuild limits, and seek help from a coach or family members. The funny thing about needing to feel better about yourself is that it often starts with feeling that you are worse off than someone else. Michael Bennett, M.D., and Sarah Bennett. Chapter 4. Sometimes unfairness can be beyond your control, and it gets worse when you have to deal with difficult people. Fairness is a myth. It cannot exist in the real world because there is always an imbalance of power. You might feel you deserve to live, get closure after childhood abuse, get a square deal, or clear your name after a false accusation. But sometimes we don't always get the fairness we deserve. Dealing with this feeling of hurt when we don't get what we want is a skill that everyone should possess. Learn to accept unfairness, especially when things are beyond your control, and choose always to treat others fairly. Not everyone can be safe or be on the winning side. The sooner you accept this fact, the easier it will be to handle situations when they arise. Whenever you feel like you are being treated unfairly, try to apply these. Even if you can't completely protect yourself from trauma, you can control your reaction to it. Find compromise. Do this by finding a balance between you and the feelings of unfairness. Avoid people that are a threat to your safety of peace of mind. Strengthen your survival skills by becoming strong enough to pursue life. Don't waste your time trying to fix difficult people. They might never change. There are problematic people who behave in annoying ways that they do not even notice. They are attractive enough to pull you into their drama and make you frustrated. You cannot change how they behave. You can only control your response to them. You know by now that you can't change anyone, especially an asshole, so don't even try. You just need to manage them effectively by staying away, as far away as possible, from them. Sometimes there are people close to us, our friends, or even our parents. Refuse to be drawn into meaningless discussions or attempts to make you feel bad. You don't have to say anything to them. Instead, motivate yourself to think strategically and do without them. They'll always be a source of anger and betrayal for you, so cut them off. Chapter 5. Don't be under any pressure to help and love others because it can affect your well-being. You might not like how this sounds, but you can't help everyone. Every day, you will face different people who seem to need your help, but it's absolutely fine not to have answers to all their problems. Helping others can be detrimental to you if you do not do it thoughtfully instead of impulsively. This means you ensure that the chances of benefit are high and the cost and risks of helping the other person are low. When we help other people, we feel a boost in our self-esteem and general positive feeling. This is good, but you must understand that you are no superhero, and there are times when there is nothing you'll be able to do to help another person because it might be beyond what you're able to do or might result in negative consequences. Don't beat yourself up too much about this. Instead, do your best and allow yourself to breathe, because even at the point you are eager to help, you might end up misusing resources and increasing risk. In a situation where you have to help and you discover it will not be beneficial to you and the other party, please abort the mission. There is a lot of work that goes into finding the right person. 
The first step is to define what you want in a partner. Take stock of your strengths and look for someone with matching credentials that can complement yours. People only change when they want to, so don't try to change another person. You'll only fail miserably. Instead, accept your partner for who they are and don't confuse loving for rescuing. Staying in a relationship should not be out of guilt or a feeling of responsibility, but because you want to be with your partner. Relationships don't always end well, so learn to communicate and understand each other effectively. If this doesn't remedy the situation, accept there is nothing else to do and decide what is best for you at that time. You can seek help from therapy or family to help you cope with the negative feelings that will result from a broken relationship. This is the only way you'll learn to manage love successfully. Chapter 6. The storms of life are a huge part of life, and communicating might be the wrong thing to do. One of the biggest lies that you'll hear is that you need to attain a level of serenity to have a fulfilling life. This is very unrealistic and mostly impossible. You'll be faced with a lot of unavoidable stress, fear, and relationship trouble as you go through your daily life. This might seem like a lot to handle, but sometimes conflict can be beneficial, and instead of constantly trying to put an end to it, Seek clarity of mind and humility to enable you to deal effectively with how you feel. Sometimes you feel the greatest hurt from close family and loved ones, even when they do the things that you hate and make you feel confused. Control your reactions and be confident in the ways that you penalize them. You might not be able to change how they behave, but you can be proud of your achievements when you're not happy. Always remind yourself of why you are putting up with their annoyance and give yourself credit for handling the situation while setting rules to stop the annoyance from getting to you. Whenever you are scared of what life throws at you, try to develop positive habits and thoughts. Think back to when you had a problem in your relationship, at work, or even with your neighbor. You were probably told that if you had communicated better, you'd have resolved the issue better. Communication is the key to achieving more and saving relationships from danger, but this is not always the case. Many problems arise from differences in ideas, culture, or character, and sometimes communication can do more harm than good. Accepting that it might not always be possible to communicate effectively and that it doesn't work like magic will help you better understand that you don't always need to try. Whether you are trying to deal with anger, trauma, or have a life-changing conversation with someone else, understand that there are limits. Even if communication helps, it isn't the ultimate answer and you can't force it. We tend to rate the success of our relationships based on our level of communication, but everyone communicates differently, so don't expect a uniform response from everyone you talk to. You should never hold yourself accountable for results you don't control, but always for the strength of trying. Michael Bennett, MD. Chapter 7. You don't have to be the perfect mom or dad before you enjoy the beauty of parenthood. Children come with a lot of responsibility, and you shouldn't even think of having them if you do not have sufficient resources to take proper care of them. You also can't successfully be a good parent when you're ignorant about children and what they are capable of, so educate yourself as much as possible. It's easy to get lost in emotions and miss the road to good parenting, but these tips should help at some point. Seek help when you don't understand what is going on. Don't downplay the value of learning. Encourage them always to learn new things. Keep disappointments to yourself and don't let them be a determinant of how you interact with your child. Accept unavoidable conflicts and try to find strength in your differences. A huge part of parenting involves keeping your cool, and it can get overwhelming most of the time, but you'll be fine. When these conflicts can't be solved, they can be managed. You may need to compromise often for peace to reign. Raising a child is not easy as you feel responsible for everything that happens to them, even the things that are not in your power to control. For instance, if your child has a learning disability, you can only do so much to help them. 
encourage hard work, and develop methods for giving them priorities and values. Try not to blame yourself for any of it. You are doing your best. Did you know? In a research conducted by Pew Research Center 2015, 92% of married parents revealed that it matters a lot that their partner sees them as a good parent. Conclusion. Getting treatment doesn't automatically guarantee that you will feel better. You need to research the methods and people you think will work best for you and understand that even if the treatment plan you choose fails, you will have to manage your life on your own. Instead of relying totally on treatment, use it as a tool to discover the limits that you can control. And if you find that you are not positively responding to it, stop it. Ask questions and choose a plan that fits your personality. Do not equate any of these treatments to a cure. You'll be less disappointed if things don't work out. It's also okay to seek professional help while handling life issues. In choosing a clinician, ensure you look for qualities like humor and humility. This is because your doctor should be able to embrace the uncontrollable nature of human life. You'll definitely feel a lot of emotions daily. Instead of letting them control your life, manage them well enough to achieve the most from life. You can't control what happens to you, but you can manage it and enjoy a more positive life. There's no straight path to happiness or success. There are many detours. All you need to do is ensure you are moving at your own speed. Don't be under pressure to be perfect or expect perfection from those around you. Embrace challenges as they come and choose to respond to them positively. Try this. In talking with others, rate their ability to communicate feelings objectively before you start taking it personally. Expand your own ability to read and send out nonverbal messages. Learn to measure commitment and achievement through actions, not words. Assess your ability to tolerate silence without being negative.